Welcome. This is the sixth video in my series called Understanding Space Weather. This one is going to be about the solar cycle. One of the most common ways of keeping track of sunspots is to refer to the sunspot number. Now this is just not a simple count of the number of sunspots that are on the sun at any given time. Let's call that number n. But it also takes into account the number of sunspot groups there are on the sun at any given time. We'll call that number g. And the simple formula for the sunspot number is 10 times the number of groups plus the number of individual sunspots. Now so we can compare uh, results from different observatories, each observatory is given a constant which depends on the, the sky conditions at the observatory and the nature of the equipment and so on. And so you take your sunspot number multiplied by, by your personal constant and that gives you a number that can compare with all the other observatories around the world. And remember, sunspots come and go fairly quickly, so uh, one observatory in one time zone may not see the same spot configuration as an observatory in another uh, time zone. The keeper of the keys of this system is the Solar Influences Data Center, which is located in uh, the Royal Observatory in Belgium. We have overall about 400 years worth of sunspot data. Unfortunately, it's not all of equal quality. You'll note the points on the left here, the first 150 years, are marked in red. And that's because they're not of very good quality at all. There are relatively few observations made and the equipment uh, that they used to take them was rather rudimentary. The most commonly used section of data is the so-called reliable record, which stretches from 1750 to the current day, 270 years about. The modern record is considered the, the most reliable set of data, and that stretches from about 1840 to the current day, about 180 years. But even now, some schools of thought say that the data from the middle of the 19th century is not all that uh, good because of the way it was taken. Three different observers used three different techniques to determine the uh, sunspot number. And there is thought that these peaks, these very high peaks in the middle of the 19th century, are actually probably much higher than they're shown here and may even rival uh, those from the eight, 1940s and 1950s uh, in overall intensity. The sunspot number tends to be highly variable. This is the plot for uh, solar cycle 24 so far. In yellow is shown the daily sunspot number and you can see it fluctuates quite wildly from day to day. You can take a monthly average of those numbers and it smooths out slightly, that's the blue curve here. But more commonly what we do is we take a um, smoothing of 13 months and that's the red curve. And that produces a nice uh, controlled signal with lot of, without a great deal of fluctuation. And you can see from that curve that the maximum of solar cycle 24 was in about April of 2014. We can see that the sunspot cycle is not regular. Since 1750 we've had 24 solar cycles and in a period of 264 years that amounts to approximately an average of 11 years per cycle. However, the longest cycle was about 14 years and the shortest cycle has been about 8 years. So looking at the solar cycle as just a strictly 11 year phenomenon is probably not the way to go. Nor are the amplitudes of the cycles very much the same and they don't seem to follow very much of a pattern. Uh, they vary from less than 50 to over 200 over the 24 cycles that we've seen so far. You may hear, especially on YouTube, a lot of people trying to forecast the solar cycle with a great deal of confidence. Don't believe them at all. It's very difficult to do. We've only got 24 samples of a solar cycle, so we probably haven't seen the maximum length between uh, maxima or the maximum out, um, magnitude of a maximum. So from maximum to maximum, we've got a choice, at least at the moment, of between 8 and 14 years. That's nearly a factor of 2. And similarly for the minimum to minimum time, though that is even more poorly defined. And the amplitude is actually worse than that. 
uh, in the last 24 cycles we've had uh, variations in amplitude from 40 to 200 and if you go back to the Maunder minimum you can take that lower limit down to zero and there seems to be no pattern to either the amplitude or the uh, the timing uh, of these cycles and that is why over 104 published predictions for the solar cycle last time around for solar cycle 24 that is uh, none of them none of them got both the amplitude and the timing correct the situation becomes even more complicated when you consider the magnetic cycle which is twice as long as the um, sunspot cycle so this is a 22 year period and you can see that in this diagram this is a picture of the latitudes at which magnetic field has appeared throughout each one of the cycles so each one of these uh, structures here is one of the cycles and it, this is called a butterfly diagram because each cycle looks rather like a butterfly to understand what's going on let's isolate one of the cycles this is solar cycle 22 at the beginning of that cycle you have negative polarity that's blue uh, color at the northern pole and positive polarity that's yellow color at the south pole and before any sunspots appear that's all that's there so basically you have the sun as a bar magnet with negative polarity at the top and positive polarity at the bottom as the cycle progresses sunspots start to appear at high latitudes and as the cycle goes along they tend to drift towards the equator in the northern hemisphere negative spots are leading in the southern hemisphere positive spots are leading in the interim, during the main phase of the uh, solar cycle, the trailing flux from uh, each of the hemispheres seems to migrate towards the pole. This is called a meridional flow and starts to replace the flux at the North Pole and the South Pole, eventually reversing it. But for a time, you'll note here that both poles were negative. So the sun at this time has lost its large scale structure as a, as a bar magnet and is more dependent on the magnetic fields, the complex magnetic fields that are associated with the active regions. Uh, by the end of the cycle, that flux moving up to the polar regions has completely uh, reversed the polarity of the, the two poles. And now we have positive flux at the northern uh, pole and negative flux at the, the southern pole and so that now would set up the next cycle which would reverse it back again that's why the magnetic cycle is 22 years so let's do a quick summary of what we know about the sunspot cycle the cycle starts with a north-south field the spots start to appear at high latitudes and over the period of the uh, cycle they drift towards the equator at the end of that cycle, at the end of that cycle, the sunspots have disappeared, and now you have uh, the opposite polarity from what you started with, and then that process reverses again over a 22-year period, and we end up with where we started. Well, how does that all work? Well, the answer comes from an earlier video that I did about the rotating sun, and I pointed out there that the sun rotates differentially; I it rotates at different speeds at different latitudes. So we'll start out with a vertical north-south field line uh, and then see what happens when the sun rotates differentially. After a few rotations, that field will go from being vertical to horizontal. And the more it winds up, the more strong it gets. And eventually that field kinks and forms a sunspot group. Now the sunspots will initially form at high latitudes, but as they cancel and uh, dissipate, uh, the sunspots move further and further down uh, towards the equator. Eventually they get close enough together that they can start cancelling between the northern and southern hemispheres. So if you cancel the magnetic flux from the northern hemisphere with some from the south, that leaves an excess of that polarity in the northern hemisphere and the opposite polarity in the, in the southern hemisphere. And that flux is transported to the polar regions through something called the meridional flow where it cancels with the, the polar magnetic fields, uh, eventually overwhelming them and replacing them, replacing the northern polarity in the north with southern polarity and the southern polarity in the south with northern polarity. So at the end of this process, you end up with more southern 
south flux at the at the top of the picture and more northern flux at the bottom of the picture and you have the exact reverse of what you started with 11 years before and it'll take another 11 years for it to, to repeat this process and get back to where it started in our next video i'm going to discuss the evolution of the sun over many billions of years